Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's lecture is looking at class two biomechanics with aligners. Now, this was a lecture by Dr. Bing Fang, and it's one of the lectures as part of this year's first International Orthodontic Foundation, which is run online. This was run by Ravi Nanda and Co. It is a really good symposium looking at the scientific breakdown of new contemporary ideas. Just to recap, the podcast is the opinion piece of myself and the orthodontics and summary team and may not be 100% representative of the initial lecture, though we try our best to ensure that it is. Now the lecture was divided up into two halves. The first was looking at aligners and intrusion, specifically after functional appliances. And the second component of the lecture was looking at a new idea, an advancement mandibular spring. So the first part of the lecture, looking at lower incised intrusion with aligners, essentially a functional appliance is carried out to correct the sagittal, sagittal discrepancy using a herbst in her case. But what to do afterwards? Well, typically the occlusion requires intrusion of the low incisors, I'm talking of the upper incisors. The challenge and the risk that aligner intrusion therapy takes is that we could result in either proclination or retroclination of the low incisors. So to figure out the answer to this question, what Bing and her team did was to carry out a finite model analysis to see what happens for different positions of lower incisor inclination. And I thought this was really interesting. Their findings showed that when the lower incisor to mandibular plane angle exceeded 100 degrees, procline low incisors, the intrusive force was anterior to the center of rotation. Naturally, that results in then proclination taking place further or buccal crown torque and lingual root torque occurring. The opposite was true when it was found for the low incisor to mandibular planes angle to be less than 100 degrees, falling into the average patient. This intrusive force was now behind the center of rotation. This resulted in having some lingual crown torque taking place and buccal root torque occurring. So what was the conclusion from this when it comes to our mechanics? Well, when we have procline teeth, intrusion should be carried out with retraction at the same time. If we have retrocline teeth, we should have intrusion, but with labial crown torque also occurring. Now, the second part of the lecture was looking at this new idea of the advanced mandibular spring. And this was really, really interesting. So what is it? Well, essentially it is a spring which is embedded in, which can be embedded into the aligner itself. The patient has an option to be able to detach it. So what Bing Fang showed was patients were using class two elastics during the day and using this advanced mandibular spring at night time, inserting it themselves into the appliances. So what is it? Well, it's very similar to a, a, a forces appliance. It's a, it's a telescopic arm with a spring inside of it. Distalization taking place on the posterior teeth and, and therefore allowing the sagittal correction to take place. Now, what was interesting in the construct of this, the aligner itself had an attachment to allow the spring to be inserted. Relatively simple, just a round piece of rubber for the connector and the patient was able to insert it themselves. Similar to how we get patients to use class two elastics. They have a point of attachment and insert it. And what they found when it came to exploring this scientifically using a finite model analysis again, is that it was favorable creating the forces for mandibular advancement. The periodontal forces that were experienced across the dentition were even and promoted mandibular growth, both at a dental level, but also looking at things from the condylar perspective as well. I thought it was a really interesting lecture. I'm looking forward to seeing more coming up at the advanced mandibular spring and seeing how patients get on with putting it in and taking it out. Quick update for me, we're well, looking forward to the next blog, which we're going to be covering rapid maxillary expansion on, and then the next summary topic from the AAO, which took place back in May. As always, please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.